Captain Jason Norwood, who earned a third round submission back in his fight in the middleweight fight against Tech Sergeant Christopher Davis. And now we're moving on to the final fight before intermission. And we're looking at the heavyweight division now. And you're looking at Sergeant's first class, William Smith from Fort Carson, walking his way to the ring. He's going to be fighting Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid from Fort Riley, guys. Yeah, these guys are the heavyweights. This is my weight class right here. This is where the big boys come out and throw down. Uh, Song first class, uh, William Smith. Uh, this is the first time in, his, in the competition, but, you know, testament to his hard work coming out here and, uh, you know, fighting for third. Um, Steph Sarn, Lonnie Kincaid, uh, you know, I know him from uh, years past uh, competition. Never seems to get past that slump that he's been in. Uh, uh, he won third place in 2009, 2010, and 2011. So, you know, obviously a veteran of the tournament, but once again, he'll be fighting for third place, unfortunately, you know. Sorry, uh, sorry yeah. Sales, just want to say, you have been, you've had experience, like we mentioned, you're a three-time winner in this division. What's it like fighting in the heavyweight division out here? Well, it is, let's just say it's an experience. You know, you got uh, guys of different uh, walks of life, you know, everybody uh, brings something to the table, whether it be their wrestling, uh, Muay Thai, um, you know, boxing, whatever it is, and you come out here and, and you know, you basically try to put your best foot forward and, uh, and and basically, you know, just try to bring it home for, you know, all the hard work and all your friends that you, you know, help you train for the competition. So here comes Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid. You heard Sergeant Sales just mention it a moment ago. Third place in 2009, 2010, and 2011. A very a little showmanship right here from right. Lonnie Kincaid. Uh, you know, stretching, just moseying out to the cage, and this has kind of been his demeanor the whole tournament. Um, you know, he was a big favorite coming into this tournament because uh, Staff Sergeant Brandon Sales here wasn't competing, so no one was here to upset him, but. He was upset by Fort Hood's own Jason Reyes, 220-pound heavyweight. Yeah, Sergeant Kincaid being one of the, uh, if not the biggest uh, heavyweight of the tournament. Uh, unfortunately, in the years that we did compete together, we never did see each other, whether it be in the standard rules or the semifinals. Um, we're on opposite ends of the bracket. Uh, but him scoring third every year just shows that, you know, a lot of hard work. And uh, again, the competition gets tougher every year, so it's not easy to come out here and win this thing. Sergeant, Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid, 34 years of age. He's listed as 301 pounds. From so, so he's a small heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he's making his way into the ring right now. A very intimidating presence by his size. But judging by the music and his, his walk to the ring, seems like a very fun-loving guy. And uh, we're getting ready to go here in this heavyweight fight. Yeah, definitely. Sergeant Kincaid never takes himself too seriously. Comes out here, have a good time every competition. Um, I was excited to see him competing. He's in a lot better shape than he was last year. He lost about probably about 30 pounds, slimmed down. His cardio was excellent. But again, like uh, Sam Sergeant Smith said, he got upset by uh, Sergeant Reyes out of Fort Hood. Um, you know, one of the smaller competitors in heavyweight class, fought 185 years past. Um, it felt like he felt more comfortable at heavyweight, you know. It's, it's a tough cut for, the, for bigger guys to get down to that weight class. Um, he worked very hard, uh, you know. Wasn't a big favorite coming in, uh, Sergeant Reyes was, but now beating Sergeant Kincaid, I think he will be. Sergeant First Class William Smith in the blue corner, Lonnie Kincaid in the red. We should mention Smith from Anaheim, California. First time in these championships, and uh, he's had a good first showing here, making all the way to the third place fight. Yeah, if you look at uh, Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid, 81 inch reach. He has a seven inch reach advantage over Sergeant First Class William Smith. I think that'll serve dividends for him on the feet. We are underway here in the first round of this heavyweight bout between William Smith and Lonnie Kincaid. Want to remind you, after this fight, we are going to be heading to intermission. And uh, during intermission, we'll get to see some feature pieces featuring some of these uh, soldiers here from Fort Hood. And after that, we have the championship fights on the card. Looks like Sergeant Kincaid uh, got the takedown or a takedown attempt. He's controlling the head and arm uh, in a turtle position. Uh, look, looks like he's trying to get him on his back. I, don't, I, I really doubt he's going to try to set up a submission attempt from here. Uh, the big man is known for putting people on their back and, and punching them quite brutally. So. 
Staff Sergeant Kincaid uh, trying to gain the upper hand. It looks like he's got it at the moment. William Smith trying to fight back, and uh, it's going to be a, a long road ahead for Smith when you're going up against a guy who's over 300 pounds. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you see uh, Lonnie Kincaid here, Staff Sergeant, uh, grabbing the pants again, utilizing tools that are on his on his uh, opponent, um, you know, to keep him down. But Sarn, Sarn Smith right here, he's, uh, he's definitely getting back to his base, doing a good job. But the size of Lonnie Kincaid is just, it's, it's, it's tough. It's like weighing on somebody. It's not easy, trust me. I know, I roll around with these big boys all the time over where I'm at. Um, not easy to find training partners either for a guy of, uh, you know, Sarn Kincaid's uh, size and stature. Uh, with that being said, you know, Sarn Smith out there, you know, giving it the best he can. But, you know, again, this is... Uh, Sergeant Kincaid's fourth competition. So. Kincaid trying to hammer away with the right hand. You heard the referee uh, telling Will Smith he's got to protect himself. Yeah, he's looking to cage walk here is uh, Sergeant First Class William Smith. Um, he's looking to cage walk, but looks like Now he's a cage walk with 300 pounds sitting on top of you. That's true, and I don't know how that is yet. You know, maybe me and you will give an yeah. exhibition bout, and then you can see what it feels like. I don't want to upset you, two-time champion. <laughs> <laughs> Three-time champion. Thank you. Yeah, get it right, Colton. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just referee that fight. I don't want. I don't want any part of this. I'm, it's times like these where I'm glad I'm sitting uh -oh. in this chair. So I can get got over to the mount and expect some big punches here. He already has a uh, uh, first class Smith's arm trapped behind him. Uh, Sergeant Cade's big, uh, big on arm bars from the mounted position, though. Very strong gentleman, obviously, but you know he'll sit on top and gladly punch someone in the face if they let him. You know, yeah. right here, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Smith needs to buck off as hard as he can, try to create some space, get on his side. He's laying flat on his back. Again, it's not easy with a guy of this size you know punching you in the face, hammer fisting you in the face, just controlling the position. Uh, I'm pretty sure the referee's going to stop it real soon. Stop, 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 stop. Yep, and there it is. You called it. And uh, well, I was waiting to see if, if Sergeant First Class Smith could get through the first round, if he could just get through the round and then maybe restart the second round on his feet. Maybe he can try to get in better position. But once he was on his back, he never had a chance to get back up. And credit Lonnie Kincaid for uh, holding that pressure down on William Smith, and he ends up winning the fight via TKO. <laughs> You hear the cry out from uh, Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid yelling Riley, you know, in support of Fort Riley, who uh, I believe were runner-ups last year. Yes, they are. They bring a good You're team correct. every year. Uh, again, Sergeant Kincaid being a, a big part, uh, no pun intended there, a big <laughs> part of their team. Um, but again, a big man, uh, competes every year, very laid-back gentleman, doesn't take himself too serious. You can see he plays the crowd very well. Some good showmanship here from <laughs> Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid of Fort Riley. Points for Fort Riley. Fort Riley came into the day in 10th place in the standings with 185 points. So this will uh, certainly help their cause as they try to move up the standings. A uh, tough fight for William Smith. He just, like we said, guys, he just, he got on his back. And then after that, he just didn't really have a chance, did he? No, no, he, you know, he didn't. He got mounted by a, the, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger opponent, you know. And, and he tried bucking, and he had the warrior spirit, but the ref had to stop it. That's Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid. And there you have it, the arm raised for Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid. And that concludes the first half of our fights here at Fort Hood. The championship fights are moments away, but of course, first we got to turn our attention to intermission. It's been a great first half of action so far. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more live here from Fort Hood. How much time we got? Uh, I don't know just yet, but you'll be all right.
Yeah. Okay, what are we what are we doing here? What are we coming back? Okay. Okay, so you just want me to come back and recap a little bit and then pitch to another break? Okay, all right, no problem. All right, I can do that. If you want to take a break too, you can, Sarge, if you want. Oh, we got plenty of time. Yeah, you're good. We got plenty of time. All right. And welcome back, everybody, to the U.S. Army Combative Championships here at Fort Hood. We are at intermission. We've had eight fights so far, and it's been a great day for Fort Hood. They've had five fighters in action through the first eight fights, and they have all come away victorious. Fort Hood coming into the day in second place in the standings behind Fort Stewart, Georgia. But now they have overtaken Fort Stewart, Georgia uh, in first place for those standings. So congratulations thus far for uh, Fort Hood, but we have plenty of more fights. The championship fights are going to be coming up here after intermission, and of course, we're going to be here to bring you some of those fights, but for now, we're going to take another quick break. We thank you once again for joining us here on My Text. We'll see you after the break. Are we still going till seven? Till 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 all of the championship fights are over. All right, all right. Um, uh, the fight or the general, I'm guessing. It, wait, hold on, Christy's here. Hold on one second. All right, uh, CJ, can you still hear me? All right, uh, what are we doing here when we come back from break? Do you need me to do something or are you just gonna have the camera on this or what do we want? Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't really even know. I mean, if we wanna, uh, I can talk more maybe about the matchups that are coming up uh, and, and the standings and stuff like that if you wanna do that. Um, yeah, why don't we just do that? If you want to come back to me and we'll talk about the fights coming up, and then I'll just talk a little bit about the fights, and can we take another break after that for a couple of minutes? Okay, all right, all right. N O U J A I M. In fighting, the
and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Fort Hood. We are at the U.S. Army Combative Championships, and it's been a heck of a night so far here at Fort Hood. The first half of the schedule is in the books as the third place fights are completed. We are at intermission here at Fort Hood. The championship fights will be on the way as soon as we're done here at intermission. Thus far, Fort Hood has competed in five of the first eight fights, and they've won all five, securing their spot thus far at the top of the standings over Fort Stewart, Georgia. Georgia uh, came into the day in first place. Fort Hood was in second, followed by Minnesota National Guard, Fort Bragg from North Carolina, Fort Carson from Colorado, and the 5th Special Forces Group from Kentucky. So there's still some jockeying going on at the top of the team standings. And coming up in the championship fights, we're going to see three fighters from Fort Hood and two fighters from Fort Stewart. So first place uh, still has yet to, it's going to be a long road to, to decide who is going to come away with the, that first place standings. If you remember back in 2011, Fort Hood did win the competition with 462 points. Fort Riley coming up as the runner up. Fort Riley from Kansas with 385. And again, in the championship fights, we've got another eight fights coming up. And the last fight of the night uh, should be a real good one as Nathaniel Freeman from Fort Stewart takes on Sergeant Jason Reyes from Fort Hood. That fight could very well determine who walks away with the first place prize. Joining me uh, to my left now, Sergeant Brandon Sales. I'm not sure if we can uh, widen this camera out a little bit and we can get Sergeant Sales here in with me. And thus far, a very entertaining first half of the of, uh, of the night thus far, Sarge. And uh, what, what have your impression of, impressions have been so far from what we've seen? Well, again, um, a lot of these competitors don't have the opportunity to train year-round like, you know, more, most professional athletes sure. do. A lot of these uh, soldiers come out here do it uh, part-time um, or on their off time or do it as training for uh, real combat situations. Um, a lot of the stresses of competition relate to combat itself. So, you know, it's a good training tool for leaders in their units to uh, get their soldiers prepared mentally as well as emotionally and physically downrange, uh, you know. So, you know, th again, this is just a training tool for a lot of these soldiers coming out here. Yes, we get the opportunity to compete in front of uh, the world now that we're, you know, televised. It took a few years for us to get there. Uh, it's basically for us to push uh, the word of combatants out to the Army and say, hey, check it out. This is what our soldiers need to be doing. All right, this is a very uh, key task as far as, you know, uh, a soldier's skill. And we just want to make sure that everybody understands the importance of this competition. It isn't, yes, it's for sport, but again, it's to push the word of combatives as far as across the Army and let them know that, hey, we're, we're here. We want more people to get involved. And we want to make sure that, you know, that people realize, again, this is not for sport. We use it as a training tool for our soldiers to prepare for combat. So I, I was just mentioning uh, Fort Hood and Fort uh, Stewart, Georgia battling for that top spot here in the standings and Fort Hood had a great showing in the first eight fights and uh, they have another opportunity. It's an interesting final fight in the heavyweight division as Nathaniel Freeman from Fort Stewart is going to be taking on Jason Reyes from Fort Hood. That fight could very well determine who comes away in first place. Yeah, um, due to the fact that, uh, you know, I fought Freeman. He's fought in a few competitions now. Uh, he got second uh, the year uh, that I beat him. Um, and Sergeant Reyes, again, is a veteran of the uh, competition as well. He has competed in lighter weight classes, bumping up to uh, heavyweight this year. Um, I don't think it'll be the determining factor as far as team points. I think Fort Hood may have already established, uh, established themselves as the winner due to the fact they got so many people in the finals uh, in the third, uh, you know, third in uh, place competition. So um, I think it's going to, you know, if Fort Hood keeps up the way they are, they're going to guarantee uh, to take that uh, team title. Just because, you know, that just shows the, the hard work they put in, you know, for the competition. Again, they're hosting, so yes, it's very important for them, sure. or a, a very big thing for them to win at home. So, sure. What are we seeing in the ring here? Have we seen uh, some of the female competitors going in the ring? Uh, what, what are we looking at right now? Well, this is just an exhibition match to show, uh, you know, some of the things that's been tossed around in the Combatters World, uh, stating that perhaps we, we should have a uh, uh, an all-female bracket. Uh, just for to get more females involved a lot of females not saying that all of them would um, Don't necessarily compete in the uh, the, the men's weight class um, This it was some, something brought up uh, in years before uh, that maybe we should have an all-female bracket that way uh, You know, maybe you know get more females involved 
Um, but that being said, every year the, the female competition gets better. You know, they're soldiers first. They come out here and represent. Um, and we, you know, we're very likely to see in the near future a female uh, uh, All-Army champion, I, I do believe. I think that would be a, a great addition to the U.S. Army Combative Championships. It's been a very entertaining night thus far here at Fort Hood. We are at intermission at the U.S. Army Combative Championships live right here on my text. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back with much more here from Fort Hood. How long is the break? Okay. Okay. Okay, so four minutes in total still.
welcome back to Fort Hood. We are at intermission here at the U.S. Army Combative Championships. I'm Pierre Newsom. Joining me now, one of the victors from the third place fights in the first portion of our card, Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid from Fort Riley joins us now. And Sergeant, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about the fight you just had against William Smith. You were able to win in the first round via technical knockout. Uh, walk us through that fight, how you were able to get it done. Well, um, I just came in and threw a couple jabs. Uh, I wanted to test his, uh, his stand-up game a little bit. Uh, the jabs connected, like, really successfully, so um, which caused him to the gate. As he backed up into the gate, you know, I was uh, attempting to go for his legs, take it to the ground. Uh, he was very strong down there. Um, I usually can just roll people right over once he gets to the ground, but uh, he, he held his own for about a minute or two. And then once I once I pulled him away, I literally had to pull him away from the gate. Uh, once I pulled him away, then uh, then yeah, it was uh, pretty easy. I got the mount, and I just kept punching to the ref called it. I you know we don't really want to hurt nobody out here, but uh, we, we want to make it obvious so the ref sees it and that uh, they're in the fight. Sure, and you walked out to probably uh, the most uh, entertaining music, perhaps, of, of anyone. A bit lighthearted, a bit fun-loving. It seemed like everybody's all business out here. You seem like uh, you just want to have fun with it, it looked like. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm about to go recruiting. Matter of fact, you're going to be there in two days. Um, I'm about to go recruiting. So uh, every other year I was here, which has been this is the fourth year now, I came out here, I wanted everything. I, I, I really wanted, had a burning desire to get everything, and I was unsuccessful. But this year, I just came out, I was just kind of laid back, you know, whatever happens, happens. And uh, it just turned out the same same as when I was uh, really uh, aggressive with it. So, you know. Now, you've been fighting uh, in, in this competition for, for quite some time. Have you ever, when people step into the ring with you, I mean, let's, let's not, uh, you know, make no mistake about it. You are a very large man. You're tall, you're over 300 pounds. It's got to be intimidating to go up against a, a guy like you in the ring, but uh, how, how do you use that intimidation perhaps to your advantage? Uh, I think I actually use it with my uh, laid back, me being laid back instead of all fired up. Playing possum perhaps a little bit? Yeah, kind of like the Undertaker, just come out all <laughs> calm and, and just look at all serious. That's usually how I, how I do. I think, I think it works to my advantage in that way. And then from this being my fourth time, I actually a guy just, just told me that uh, he said, uh, my name precedes me, like a reputation precedes me. So, you, you know. haven't been practicing to any tombstone pile drivers or anything like that, though, have you? <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. All right. Well, All right. of course, like I said, we wouldn't want to hurt anyone out here, but right, uh, congratulations exactly. to you on your victory. Right. Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid joining us now here at Intermission of Fort Hood. Congratulations on the victory. We appreciate you taking the Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Staff Sergeant Lonnie Kincaid, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move it along here. At uh, intermission from Fort Hood, you're watching the U.S. Army Combative Championships on MyTex. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the U.S. Army Combative Championships from Fort Hood, Texas. I'm Pierre Newsom. You are watching the U.S. Army Combative Championships right here on my text. Joining me now is Chris Perkins. And Chris, uh, you, you've overseen a lot of these operations here taking place in Fort Hood, getting this event going. What does it take uh, to get an event like this into Fort Hood and make it as successful as it's been so far? Well, first and foremost, it, it takes the chain of command. Uh, the chain of command is completely behind combatives here on Fort Hood, which makes uh, my job a little bit easier sure. uh, bringing things like this. Uh, there's been lots of support from outside agencies. We, we receive donations uh, through the nonprofit organization that supports combatives. Uh, it's, 
it, and it's a, a lot of teamwork on the soldiers' part, but uh, that's what they're the best at, and it's, it makes it really easy to put it together when they all get, get behind you and help. Have there been any other uh, posts that have kind of maybe vibed for this event to be at their post? What, why have, has Fort Hood uh, gotten to win out over everyone else? Well, because we're the two-time champions. Yeah, that uh, helps, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, originally it was, you win it, you get it, and uh, we've won it twice, and we got it twice, uh, but uh, we don't know if we'll ever get a, lose it, so uh, we kind of went to an Olympic bid style. Fort Carson has bid for it, so it looks like we might be at Colorado next year uh, defending our title there, hopefully. And what has it been like for you know for the citizens of Colleen and then the surrounding communities of Fort Hood to have this type of event in town? Uh, it, you know, it brings in a lot of soldiers. Uh, a lot of people come to see it. Uh, obviously, there's some awesome fights that, yep. uh, that you know, guys that you see a lot of heart. You see a lot of talent. Every year, the talent pool goes up. Uh, the fights get harder. Uh, but the, the community, you know, supports them. Local gyms allow them to come in. The post gyms allow them to come in. And, and a lot of them get to come and see a lot of old friends, too. From what you've seen so far tonight, uh, we've seen uh, eight third place fights. We're at intermission now here at the U.S. Army Combative Championships. From what you've seen so far, what do you think of the fight so far? What are you looking forward to in uh, the championship fights coming up? Well, the fights have been awesome because the Fort Hood guys have won all their fights so far. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, and, you know, I'm not biased at all, but uh, it no, makes, no, makes them really good. Uh, the level of competition in the Army has skyrocketed. Uh, to, to make it to this day is a, is a feat in itself. So. Uh, I expect to see some uh, pro-level fights coming up here because a lot of the guys you're about to see are pro fighters. And we're looking forward is to, uh, to those championship fights coming up on the way after intermission is complete. Chris, we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Best of luck to you in the future. And once again, congratulations on putting on such a great thank event you. here at Fort Hood. Thanks again. Thank you. Chris Perkins, ladies and gentlemen. And we are at intermission here at Fort Hood at the U.S. Army Combative Championships. We're back with more right after this. Yeah, we're in break right now. Okay. How much time left do we have in intermission? They call it a 10 minute intermission all the time, which they weren't going to have. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. What's your name? Captain Daniel McCord. I don't know what's the pickup on these things. All right, we can hear ourselves. No, you'll be able to hear me. We don't have you won't. You probably, can you hear me now? You can probably hear me. I can, me now. I can hear you now. Um, yeah. Um, United States Army Combatives Commander. Combatives yes. U United States Army. Well, yeah, you get it. You get it. You get I it. Gotcha, I got gotcha. you. Uh, and like, so, so do you help like train these guys fight and stuff? Or uh, we actually are in charge of the yes. training of the fighting. We train the instructors. So we're the we're the Army's proponents. Oh, okay. okay. All right, we're about one minute out. I'll come back. We'll do a little Q and A here. And uh, okay, try not to stump me. Don't worry, I Is it live? Yeah, it'll be live. Oh man, I'm gonna mess it up. I'll, I'll give it. I'll give him my best. As long as you don't cuss, I'm sure it'll just be fine. Okay. You want me to look at you, or will I look at the camera? We'll, we'll start here, and then like when we're talking, you can just look at me. There's no problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll do it after. after he might. He might be better than me. <laughs> CJ, how much time do we have left in this intermission? Welcome back to Fort Hood. We are at the U.S. Army Combative Championships. We are at intermission. Joining me now is the captain, Daniel McCord. He is uh, with the U.S. Combatives. He is the U.S. Combatives Commander. And uh, Captain, appreciate you being here. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about what it takes uh, to become a U.S. Combatives Commander. Uh, truth is, uh, the right place at the right time. Um, I was going through the career course and needed someone to, to step up and uh, show some leadership in that area. Um, so they moved me over to the uh, United States Army Combative School out of Fort Benning. Uh, it's a really, it's a really unique job. We've uh, we've got about 18 instructors, and we are we serve as the Army's proponency. Um, so 
every, there's four stages if people understand uh, how combatives works. You've got uh, the basic combatives course, the tactical combatives course, and then you have the two instructor courses, the basic combatives instructor course and the tactical combatives instructor course. Uh, we teach the instructors at the schoolhouse. And what is it, when, you, when you're teaching the instructors, what is it you want them to walk away with? How do you want them prepared as they walk out when the they door? leave, When they leave our gym, uh, it's a 120 hours uh, course that people come from all, literally all around the world. Uh, Army sends them to us, we train them. Uh, when they leave, they need to go back to their battalions or their brigades and continue to train the force. So uh, all in all, we're responsible for training you know, over 15, or between 15 and 20,000 level one and level two guys every year. And uh, from what we've seen so far tonight in the fights, what, what have been your impressions thus far in the first half? Oh, absolutely of impressive. Every year, every year we show up, um, the level of competition gets higher and higher. So as commanders, but more focus on uh, not only on the, on the combatives aspect and what it and what it offers to the, and what it offers to the fight. Um, these guys have, have gone back to their schoolhouses. They've trained their soldiers, and they've shown up here at large. And uh, and and really, the proof is in the pudding. Well, uh, we appreciate uh, Captain Daniel McCord uh, joining us here. Uh, for joining us here, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Best of luck to you for the rest of the way. And uh, right now, I'm uh, I'm told we have a very special guest joining us here ringside. Uh, the man himself, General Don Campbell, back with us once again. General, it's nice to see you again. Good to see you, Perry. How are you? I'm doing just fine. How are you? Terrific, great well, night. It has been a great night. I'm sure you have been very pleased with what you've seen so far tonight. Oh yeah, a lot of great fights. A lot of, a lot of, all the soldiers are terrific. Very proud of all of them. Whether they win or lose, this is about the warrior ethos. It's about closing with and destroying your enemy. And our troops are really doing that. And, and, and that's, you touched on something I, I was going to bring up with you. Uh, we, last time we did this, we talked about how it's much more than just you know a mixed martial arts, any type of fighting in the ring. These are skills that these soldiers are learning in the field that they're going to have to use perhaps at some point if they're, you know, come face to face with Abs them. Absolutely. We talk closing with and destroying your enemy. In addition to next year, there will be a tactical phase using different scenarios, taking a prisoner down, uh, clearing it, entering and clearing a room. And so we'll, we're really moving this whole sport to make it the whole soldier and the whole team. You know, a lot, a lot in, uh, when, when you're in combat out uh, in, in the field and stuff, a lot of times it, it doesn't take a, you know, a gun or a knife or something. Sometimes it does come down perhaps hand-to-hand uh, -hand if it could, if it does come down to it and you want your soldiers prepared. Through the history of warfare, there's always been hand-to-hand -hand in some scenario. Even in Iraq and Afghanistan, when we enter and clear a room, we've had to go hand-to-hand -hand with the uh, enemy combatants. And so this is a great, great uh, bit of training that our soldiers, every soldier should go through from a combative standpoint, yes. And, and we've noticed, you know, the popularity of, the, of mixed martial arts, no doubt, has blown up all over the world, so you see a lot of guys in prep. Yeah, have, have you known of any foreign military, uh, you know, soldiers that are doing a similar type thing overseas, perhaps? Have you? There are other uh, there are other armies and other uh, countries that uh, have shown interest in, in discussing it with uh, Colonel Rahut, who's the 197th uh, uh, brigade commander out of Fort Benning. They've had inquiries from other units. Of course, I'm going to the United States Army Europe. Uh, I'm going to try to bring some fighters with me. Is that right? So we can bring a team back from USER next year. Okay. But uh, focus on Fort Hood right now. But yes, there are other armies in the world that uh, we're talking to about this type of training and uh, taking advantage of it. And, and for what, your impressions of the fight so far? We've seen some oh. good ones. Great night, a lot of great hitting, a lot of great uh, rolling, some uh, arm bars. A great night for Fort Hood, too. Fort Hood, this is great. You know, five, five wins with three submissions, uh, looking pretty tough. If we can get uh, our next three fighters in the championship, looking real good for the championship overall again. Yeah, you guys are on track to, uh, to, to win that championship one more time. You won it last year, and uh, I believe you won it the year before, if I'm not mistaken. So. This would be uh, three in a row, yep. but who's counting? Look at that. <laughs> of course not. It could be a three-time champion here at Fort Hood. General Don Campbell joining us here as uh, we're getting ready for second half action of this fight in the Bantamweight division in general. We appreciate it very thanks, much. Peter. Thanks again for stopping by. Best of luck to thank you for you. the rest. And uh, thanks, thanks for having to, us here uh, Thanks to KCN for putting this on for us. Our pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh. That's the general himself, Army General Strong. Don Campbell. We thank him for joining us here ringside. And now we're getting ready to go here on the championship portion of the show. And we're going to start with the Bantamweight division uh, as Specialist Sean Stebbins from Minnesota National Guard joins us. Or he's in the ring now in the red corner. He's going to be fighting, fighting 
Jonathan uh, Mahiel from uh, Fort Sill. And uh, Mahiel is a uh, sergeant first class, and we are underway here in the first round. And joining me ringside yep, and, again uh, now. Specialist uh, Stebbins uh, got second in 2010, so you know he is he would be the veteran in the combatives tournament. This is a sergeant first class Mahiel's uh, first tournament, so. That is the voice of Sergeant Brandon Sales that you're hearing next to me here ringside. We did have Staff Sergeant Colton Smith with us, but now uh, the Staff Sergeant had to uh, leave the booth because he's going to be ringside for some of these fights coming up next. Uh, he's going to be ringside for lightweight and welterweight action, and we are underway here in the Bantamweight. Uh, Mahil and Stebbins going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, it looks like uh, Sergeant Stebbins has uh, uh, trying to gain the dominant body position here, trying to fight for the takedown. But uh, again, Sergeant Mahil uh, landing good strikes from off his back up against the cage. Again, the uh, the bantamweight division was so was such a such a big division, uh, flooded with talent this year. A lot of guys came out here. Uh, surprisingly, you know, at 110 pounds, uh, some of them actually cut down to that weight class. But still, again, the the, the talent level this year was uh, phenomenal. And we are in the first round here, the first championship fight of the night here in the Bantamweight division. We are eight fights in, and now we've moved on to the championship portion of our program. And uh, right now, like you said, we're looking. Sarma Hill setting up a yeah. triangle choke, uh, trying to control the posture. Oh, big guard slam by uh, Specialist Stebbins. Stebbins in the red corner, Mahil in the blue. All right, what uh, Sarma First Class Mahil needs to do here is. Uh, Oh, it looks like he let that position go. Back to guard, controlling the strikes. Not taking too much damage off his back right now, but still not a good place to be. You got a high guard position, controlling the arms. Uh, trying to set up, looks like an arm bar or a triangle submission. Good pressure by Stebbins. Landing strikes now. Mahale on his back, but he doesn't look like to be at uh, not really a disadvantage. He seems like he's doing just fine there on his back. Yeah, he's controlling his uh, his opponent's arms. Uh, trying to set up a triangle. High guard position. All right, he's got the arm now. Looks like he got it straightened out. Well, this could be the end of the match. He just tapped. Yep, up is. his back. Got the submission victory. There it is. We awesome just, job. We just mentioned, we were just talking about it. He looked comfortable there on his on his back, and he gets the job done. Well done by Jonathan Mahill out of Fort Sill, winning the match via first round submission. That was well done, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. He stayed composed on his back, uh, made sure he had positive control of his opponent's arms. That way he didn't take too much damage while he was there. And then uh, sunk into submission uh, slowly but surely. So the first championship trophy of the night is going to go to Sergeant First Class Jonathan Mahiel from Fort Sill. Uh, congratulations to him. A first round submission victory over Sean Stebbins from Minnesota National Guard. And there you have it. And here comes a, it's not a bad looking trophy. Not at all. Both uh, first and second place victors here. Uh, again, uh, Sir Mahil, this is his first time at the Army Championship. Uh, he's fighting a veteran of the tournament uh, and uh, came out on top. The General Don Campbell congratulating both of them in the middle of the ring. Up next is going to be our flyweight division as we see Staff Sergeant Francisco Mercado from Fort Bragg. He's going to be taking on Sergeant First Class William Haggerty, also from Fort Bragg. So a couple of fellow soldiers going at it in the ring. Yep, teammates, they both train together. Um, uh, Sergeant Haggerty uh, is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Uh, just recently got his black belt this last year. Uh, and uh, so I do believe Sergeant Mercado uh, trains under him. So, you know, he's training one of his uh, his own soldiers, one of his uh, soldier out there trying to get a little more experience. But uh, in the in the tournament, uh, Sergeant Mercado is the, seems to be the veteran. Uh, he won first place yep. in 2010 and second place in 2011 to uh, Fort Hood's own uh, Sergeant First Class Thornton. Yeah, both of these guys with some experience. Uh, uh, Sergeant First Class William Haggerty also with some experience. He placed second in 2008. So, uh, like I said, both of these guys with some experience. So it's going to be a, a, a battle of two fighters who know their way around the ring. So our first, cl uh, first class, Haggerty is a good friend of mine, uh, both from uh, the state of Hawaii, from Eva Beach. I am from the Big Island of Hawaii. 
And, uh, you know, I've known him for quite a while. Um, very excited to see him fighting for first place. Um, you know, not a very big 125-pounder, uh, but he did have to make a cut to get here. Uh, Sar Mercado, uh, again, fought uh, Sar First Class Thornton, got defeated in the first round. Uh, last year, but still, as you can see, his hard work has paid off, and he's back. And so. the winner, that's Sergeant Francisco Mercado. Oh, uh, I guess there isn't going to be a match. Uh, Sergeant Haggerty, I do believe, bowed out for, for this competition. Uh, let his the, the spoils go to uh, his uh, one of his students, I do believe. Yeah, it would appear so. Uh, it may be an injury. I'm not really sure. Uh, nothing was uh, put out just yet. Yeah. But still, you know, maybe they just didn't want to fight to their teammates. Uh, they do both have to go back to work probably uh, Monday morning, if not Tuesday morning. So, uh, but still, it would have been a fierce competition. Um, you know, it shows the, you know, the, the class that these soldiers um, put forth uh, when they come out here to compete. Yeah, so this, uh, the uh, the flyweight fight, the, there you have it. We just, like we saw, Mercado winning. Uh, Haggerty concedes the fight. And uh, now we're just going to move straight along to the lightweight championship fight now. Glenn Garrison from Fort Carson. Staff Sergeant Glenn Garrison taking on Staff Sergeant Shane Lee from Fort Hooks. Once again, uh, it's on Shane Lee's, you know, um, uh, placed third in 2011 competition. Yep. Um, very tough competitor. Um, has deployed uh, three, uh, you know, for almost three three years now. Uh, has a Purple Heart Combat Action Badge, hometown of Ephrata, Pennsylvania. I probably messed that up, but he's going against us. Uh, That's on Glenn Garrison. First time in the championship. He does. Uh, he does. He is one of the coaches for the World Class Athlete Program over at Fort Carson, Colorado. His first competition with uh, uh, Modern Army Combatives. Uh, very excited to see him compete. He is one of the best. Uh, in the world, if not uh, at wrestling. Uh, he coaches uh, our athletes that are over there competing in the Olympics. Um, he's out here, you know, uh, experience what the combative world is all about. We have had him over at the combative school in Fort Benning um, to help improve our program and, you know, the wrestling of our of our uh, soldiers coming in through the course as well as our instructors. So, And he's had a very impressive run for his first time here in the championships. And he's, don't get me wrong, he's not old by any means, but 38 years of age is, is kind of an, an older age to be making your first appearance in the championships. Yeah, uh, like I said, he's uh, competed in uh, multiple um, national competitions as far as uh, wrestling. So, uh, you know, him jumping into the Modern Arm Combatives program, uh, getting a taste of the Combatives competition, uh, just shows, you know, how how large the Combatives uh, world is growing. You know, getting these guys uh, at the best of what they do as far as wrestling, coming out here to compete, uh, going to be an awesome di uh, display of, uh, of fighting here and today. And he's going to be taking on Staff Sergeant Shane Lees from Fort Hood. This is the first championship match of the night from Fort Hood. They've been successful now, in all five previous fights in third place. But now here comes Shane Lees. What do we know about Shane Lees? Right? Uh, Shane Lees trains with the Fort Hood team. Um, he's purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Again, like I said, he's been employed for 39 months at Operation Iraqi Freedom. Has a Purple Heart Combat Action Badge. Um, he has competed in the, the tournament before, placing third in 2011. So, you know, he, he is a veteran of this tournament. But uh, obviously, uh, I do believe that uh, Cesar and Glenn Garrison is a veteran as far as competition due to the fact that the level of competition he's competed at uh, for wrestling is a lot higher and he does it more often than uh, Sergeant Dees does. Staff Sergeant Shane Lees also uh, was the recipient of a Purple Heart. Uh, third place in 2011 as Sergeant Sales mentioned just a moment ago. And uh, we are now in the lightweight championship fight. If you're just joining us, uh, we've had eight fights in the third place bracket of the program, and now we're on to the championship fights. Just a moment ago, Jonathan McKeel from Fort Sill won via first round submission over Sean Stems in the Bantamweight division. And in the flyweight, William Haggerty concedes to Francisco Mercado. Uh, we don't have an official word as to why, but they both are from Fort Bragg. So, uh, like Sergeant Sales was saying earlier, he suspects perhaps probably just a, uh, a sign of sportsmanship among the teammates that they didn't want to fight each other and one concedes to the other. So now we're on to the lightweight fight.
Lees from Fort Hood in the red corner. Garrison from Fort Carson in the blue corner. And we are ready to go here in the lightweight. Yeah, I see uh, Son Garrison trying to, oh, big punch by Lees. See Son Garrison trying to close the distance, get the takedown. Uh, and, 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 and show his skills as a wrestler, but Lee's laying it on as far wasting, as punches. Yeah, wasting no time at all. Big, heavy punches, Sergeant good Lee's. movement. Garrison just needs to get his hands up, throw a couple punches to get in there, closing the distance, and, uh, and get that takedown if he wants to be successful, I think. Again, you are watching the U.S. Army Combative Championships here on My Text. We are live from Fort Hood. I'm Pierre Nugent, joined ringside here with Sergeant Brandon Sales, who is a professional MMA fighter and a three-time champion of this very event in the heavyweight division. And now uh, we've got Staff Sergeant Shane Lee and Staff Sergeant Glenn Garrison in the ring. Like I said, Sergeant fight. Garrison uh, needs to get that takedown, and he did. He knew he didn't want to stay standing for very long with the uh, Sarn Lee's due to the fact Sarn Lee's is a you know a, a more well-rounded fighter I think in general as far as combatives. Um, Sarn Sarn uh, Garrison uh, being the more dominant wrestler I think as far as this competition, um, he, he very he pretty much honed his skills using wrestling as his uh, you know as his tool to get this far. And uh, I you know I'm very excited to see him out here competing at this level. Sergeant Lee's on his back now, uh, taking a couple of rights from Sergeant Garrison, and Lee's trying to uh, gain uh, some ground here on his back. Yep. Sergeant Garrison, uh, again, just you know, sticking by his gun, staying with what he knows best, wrestling, and Sergeant Lee's trying to you know adapt his jujitsu, you know, for the style of fighter that Sergeant Garrison is. Got a, a modified half guard position on his back. Sergeant Lee's does. Sergeant Garrison just trying to land some, uh, you know, effective strikes from this position. Uh, I really doubt he wants to sit in the in the guard of Sergeant Lee's, due to the fact that I'm sure he's first in uh, multiple submissions. So he's going to try to, you know, just uh, get to up. Oh, like I said, not a good place, due to the fact that I'm not sure how versed uh, Sergeant um, Garrison is in uh, jujitsu. But I guess we're about to find out. If he keeps landing big punches, yeah. uh, you know, it may not last much longer. Garrison with the upper hand at this point. Lee's, uh, he's been opened up there. You see uh, up near his left eyebrow. Yep. Got a little blood coming out. Sean Lee's controlling his hands very well. Uh, landing some effective strikes by Sean Garrison. Maintaining good pressure, not giving him a lot of space to maneuver and get out. And uh, I can tell you what, I know for a fact that Sean Garrison is not going to get tired. Uh, I really doubt Sergeant Lee's will, but, you know, in this position, it does take a toll it, on you. It doesn't appear so. Yeah, Lee's trying to find his way to get out of it, but Garrison uh, with complete control thus far here in the first round. It's going to be really tough for Lee's to get out of this position just because I know the quality of wrestling that uh, Sergeant Garrison does have. And those little peppering punches do take a toll after a while, especially, you know, in the face and nose. Next thing you know, you're you know spitting up some blood or, or trying to breathe, and you got blood running down your face. Yep. So, yeah, Garrison doing some damage there with the right hand, as you can see. Uh, Sergeant Lee's with a cut above his left eye, and it's uh, bleeding pretty good there. But uh, he's going to have some work to do if he's going to get back in this fight. Yeah, early on, uh, Sergeant Lee's is showing some impressive yep. striking standing, and uh, it was obvious that uh, Sergeant Garrison didn't want to be there, so he got the takedown and, and went to work from what he knows best. There he just passed the half guard, uh, put in a modified half guard here. Now he's taking Sarn Lee's back of some sort, kind of a turtle position, landing effective punches to the ear. Really bad position for Sarn Lee's to be in. But like I said, the quality of wrestling that Sarn Garrison is unmatched, I believe, in this tournament. He's yeah, Lee's so long in the in the world uh, class athlete program, and now is one of the their coaches as well as competitors, so. Lee's trying to uh, find his way back to his feet, but Garrison is having none of it. <clears throat> He's got a good figure four lock or a, a quarter Nelson here on the back of the head trying to roll his opponent over. Again, good work, turtle position, landing effective punches even though his opponent's face toward the ground. Again, just a, just a grinding, grinding type of style. You see that in a lot of, um, you know, high-level wrestlers. Just keep a lot of constant pressure. You know, get to a position where they feel comfortable, throw strikes, and they don't give a lot of space. So, 
And we've got 10 seconds left here in the first round. Lee's just trying to make it out of this first round so he can get cleaned up and uh, perhaps come back with a better effort in the second round. Yeah, so Lee's definitely need to keep it standing. And there you have it. There's the bell. So the first round of action is done here in the lightweight title fight. And Glenn Garrison with a very impressive showing, like you mentioned, Brandon, uh, Lee's uh, in control early, but then Garrison turned the tables on him real quick. Yeah. So just before we go to the second round uh, here, we have Sergeant Woodbridge Bullock standing by with the winner of the Bantamweight title fight with Jonathan Mahil. Let's hear from him. And I'm standing with Sergeant First Class Jonathan Mayhill, Mayhill, uh, the champion of the Bantamweight division. Tell me, how does it feel to be a champion? Feels great. I've been training combatants for a while, and uh, I finally got my title. <laughs> it was good. Uh, how did you mentally prepare yourself and, and, and mentally train for this? Um, being this type of event and stepping it up, going from the mat to the ring, uh, how was that different for you and, and, and what impact was that? Well, uh, we had a great team. We had people that were great at wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, boxing. And uh, training with those guys, they're, they're so tough that you can make it through our training sessions. You could definitely make it here in the tournament. We were training pretty much like eight hours a day, nonstop. It, it, it was tough. There you have it. Training was the key for Sergeant First Class Jonathan Mayhill for the championship at the Bantamweight Division. Back to you, Pierre. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan Mahil, uh, the winner in that Bantamweight title fight from Fort Seal, which is in Oklahoma. And now you're looking at second round action of the lightweight title fight between Glenn Garrison and Shane Lee. Garrison, clearly the winner in that first round, but Lee's coming back right here in the second round. Yeah, Lee's doing a good job keeping it standing, not, not uh, you know giving up too much space. But there again, uh, it's starting Garrison with the uh, double leg attempt for the takedown where he feels most comfortable on the ground. Uh, plus, he's, you know, a veteran of the Greco, so, you know, Lee's going to have to create space and keep it standing on his feet, but, again, uh, Garrison, I'm sure, is trained enough, uh, or, you know, a little bit in uh, some Muay Thai as well as uh, Jiu-Jitsu, to the fact that one of his coaches is uh, Staff Sergeant William Khalili, one of my uh, original coaches when I first started competing in combatives. He was the uh, chief trainer over at the United States Army Combatives School for a very long time. And uh, so I know he is definitely versed in, uh, in you know, jiu-jitsu as well as uh, Muay Thai. But uh, again, Sarn Lee's getting a big takedown on Sarn Garrison. Garrison back on his feet. Now Lee's did spend a lot of that first round on his back. He had a big cut opened up. And uh, you hear the chance of Garrison. Garrison, he's got a lot of uh, support. But uh, back from the chance for Lee's. Well, Garrison's going to want to, you know, Drive him up against the cage if he wants that takedown. Lee's doing a good job of keeping his legs away because that's what Garrison wants. Garrison wants that leg so he can get that takedown and you know, get him back to where he feels most comfortable. Quick duck under attempt. Um, now Lee is shooting for the double leg. Got him, uh, sorry, Garrison pressed against the fence. Uh, now change it up to a single. Uh, Garrison doing a good job defending. May have, trying to secure some sort of whizzer get back to his feet. Lee's doing a good job securing that single leg. He's probably going to step around and try to, you know, straighten it out to get him on his back. Garrison landing very effective strikes from this position. All right, he got his leg back. All right, sprawled out in turtle position, landing effective body strikes. Lee's still fighting for that takedown. Really Lee. wants to get Garrison on his back so he can uh, land some effective strikes because he does not want to be here. Garrison, again, such a top competitor in wrestling. Very, very hard to beat. Lee's trying to bounce back from uh, so-so first round where he started out looking pretty good and then he spent uh, the good second portion of that first round on his back and uh, Garrison now with the advantage uh, as he's got Lee's wrapped up. Again, Lee's is really going to have to, uh, you know, I think he needs to get back to his feet. Uh, I'm not sure why he wanted to close the distance with Garrison and, uh, and, and fight for that takedown. He should have probably went back to his feet where he was landing the more effective strikes. And now Garrison landing big knees on those legs. It's going to take a toll for him later on. If they make it to the third round, he may slow his you know, attempts down to land more effective strikes. Yeah, if Lee's is going to want to have to get back, if he's going to want to get back in this fight, he's going to have to start doing it now because uh, at this rate, he's going to be down two rounds to none. And 
he's going to really have to go for a knockout blow or a submission in the third round if he wants to win this fight unless he can rebound here. Absolutely. With, uh, uh, you know, a talent like uh, Soren Garrison on your back is not going to be easy. Again, Liza is, you know, not not getting beat up too much, but those those knee strikes will take a toll later on, you know, later in the, the third round if they make it that far. He is controlling Garrison's arms. You know, make sure he's not getting hit in the face, which is going to bother him more right now. Um, I think he should just, you know, try to stand up and, and, and get up. Garrison doing a good job of controlling this position, uh, not giving up too much space for him to stand up at all. Now going back to the hammer fist, the side of Lee's head. Very frustrating for Lee's. Again, people don't realize how hard it is, you know, a wrestler of this caliber on your back. But uh, Lee's still still fighting, not giving up. He needs to get up, you know, if he, if he can. But Garrison, you know, is really going to... Try to make sure he doesn't get up. This the second round looking a lot like the first round where Lees came out in the first 30 to 45 seconds, looking pretty good. But the remaining, uh, the remainder of the round going to Garrison, and and uh, once again Garrison really has the advantage here in this fight thus far. Lees that cut opened up again over his left eye. Yeah, Garrison Lee, Lees to go just to work. signaled to the referee that he was fine. Referee asked for some sort of uh, um, you know acknowledgement, saying that he was all right due to the fact that he wasn't defending some of those punches. Uh, you know, again, him just saying, hey, I'm fine. You know, let me keep fighting. I'm kind of weathering the storm. Hopefully he gets tired, but I know, you know, Garrison's not going to get tired, especially the high-level competition he competes at. And there's the bell ending the second round, and we are heading for a third and final round between these two fighters in the lightweight championship fight. Uh, Shane Lees <laughs> appears, Sarge, that uh, he's down two rounds to none. It's going to take something drastic for him to. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be fight. surprised if the referee stops it if the cut is as bad as it looks from here. Um, well, he seems to be all right. Referee signaling, I mean, the, the medic signaling that it's okay. Um, it looks like just more swelling. The blood is just superficial. Um, you know, I'm sure the game plan's the same. He needs to keep it standing. He shouldn't try to take him to the ground. I know, you know, he probably feels comfortable once he gets his opponent on his back but it's very unlikely to get uh, Garrison on his back. And as you can see, Garrison doesn't look very winded. He's been on uh, his opponent's back the entire time, landing very effective strikes. So we'll see if Lee's game plan changes when he comes out this third round. What's the worst injury you think you've encountered during your time in the ring? Um, my last match, I broke my hand in the second round. Uh, I felt it swell up uh, you know, by the end of the second round. Um, that was probably the worst. That was my first real, real injury as far as um, you know, fighting in the cage. Um, in the ring, in the combative tournament, uh, my first competition, I wasn't, uh, you know, as highly trained as some of the guys uh, coming out there. And uh, I fought off an armbar and uh, ended up winning the match by decision. But uh, the armbar that uh, the, my opponent, Benjamin Bradley, had on me was probably the one of the worst armbars because I, I probably, uh, you know, I definitely injured something because I couldn't use my arm for like about two months. But that is quite the injury, not being able to use your arm for two months. I would say that's uh, pretty devastating. But you did win the fight, did you not? I did win the fight. I think it was adrenaline. Um, it was my first competition. I was in front of my friends and family. Again, Sergeant uh, William Khalili was one of my coaches, uh, as well as one of the instructors there. Uh, he was not one of my coaches. He was one of my trainers at the time, so I trained with him quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I just... It was, a, it was my first competition in front of a bunch of my soldiers that I did not want to lose, so I fought off the armbar as long as I could. I did regret it later, but, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, soldiers fight through a lot, and, and you know, it was just you know, a testament of what we do. Uh, looks like Sergeant Lee's uh, attempted a guillotine attempt, but he ended up, you know, falling to his guard. Again, not a good position for uh, Sergeant Lee's to be in, especially with Sergeant Garrison, the way he's been grinding these rounds out. Certainly an uphill battle now for Staff Sergeant Shane Lee's from Fort Hood. Uh, if you've been with us since the beginning, then you know that Fort Hood is undefeated Ooh, thus far. A couple big punches by Sergeant Garrison coming yeah. straight down. And it looks like Shane Lees is in trouble here. Yeah, Sergeant Lees is going to have to, you know, jump a submission of some sort. He needs to try something, whether he gives up a bad position. But, right, this is, you know, one of the worst. The fact he's punching straight down. Sergeant Lees' head is back up against the mat. So he's, uh, he's uh, taking what we call the double impact in combatives. Um, so he needs to make sure, you know, he, he tries to improve his position. I know it's not easy being in this situation. I've been there in training, luckily never during competition. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely, you know, got to, you know, try to make something happen the best he can. Yeah, give Lee's credit. I mean, he's hanging in there. His face was a bloody mess throughout the first and second rounds. But uh, he is hanging in there against uh, Staff Sergeant Glenn Garrison from Fort Carson. And... Uh, Lee's just 
trying to find a way to trying to find an opening perhaps to, to do some damage but Garrison just uh, this looks like a clinic yeah Sergeant Garrison I mean Sergeant Lee's uh, again is not gonna he's not gonna quit on this one he's a um, receiver of the Purple Heart um, has been deployed for 39 months in Operation Iraqi Freedom so you know it's just a testament of his uh, his hard work getting to this level of competition as well as just you know the intestinal fortitude to push through adversity and, and get here so we are in the third round of this lightweight championship fight Glenn Garrison appears to be in control thus far barring anything unforeseen Garrison uh, appears to be on his way to a championship in this competition and there you see him laying in with the rights and lefts yeah, he's, he's just trying to hang on Lee's need to get desperate here I know it's a horrible thing to say but he needs to get desperate and, and jump for a submission uh, I don't see him sweeping uh, Garrison you know, he's using the, the cage properly. I see him trying to set up for an arm, an arm bar of some sort, but, but Garrison's pressure is just relentless. He keeps driving down, you know, not giving much space for him to get his legs up over his head and keeping his arms in tight. So, And you see the cut opened up once again over the left eye of uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Shane Lees. And uh, not much for the offensive on uh, Shane Lees' part tonight. Garrison still hacking away. Lee's just trying to fight him off, and it uh, appears to be only a matter of time now. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't think uh, unless there's something drastic here happens where he jumps an armbar. I think we've got about another 30 seconds in the round. Garrison is going to be the victor, so uh, he needs to ride it out at this point. Garrison's doing a great job. Pressure again. He is working, so the referee's not standing it up. It's not going to happen. You know, Garrison is punching the entire time. I don't see the referee stopping it at all. Um, I could see if Garrison was laying there, then maybe the referee would stop it. But, you know, he's constantly punching. He's trying to finish the fight. Garrison on his way to a championship win. It would be his first ever championship here at the U.S. Army Combative Championships. And uh, he goes attempting the sweep. You know, hook in the leg. You know, both fighters are working. Um, Lee's is still defending to the best of his ability. You know, trying to stop some of those punches raining down on him. Yeah, there goes the 10 second mark. Garrison is probably, you know, Lee's knows he's got to jump for something. Garrison is going to ride it out and, and throw big punches toward the end. And there's the bell, and that ends the fight here in the lightweight championship match. Glenn Garrison from Fort Carson. Uh, it appears to me he's going to get his arm lifted in a unanimous decision over Staff Sergeant Shane Lees from Fort Hood. It's going to be Fort Hood's first loss of the night, unfortunately, for them. But uh, a credit to Staff Sergeant Shane Lees for making it here in the championship fight. He got third place in 2011, second place in 2012. Maybe if he's back next year, he can complete that ride to the top. Tough fight, tough fight by Staff Sergeant Lees. Again, Sergeant Garrison is such a wrestler. Um, you know, his level of competition, he competes at an elite level all the time. Um, not a big surprise for me as far as the victor in this match. Well-deserved victory. Yeah, a very hard-fought fight by Glenn Garrison. And Shane Lee is, again, a very tough competitor himself. Just uh, Garrison just did a great job of keeping him at bay. Yeah, I think... Uh, Lees early on should have kept it standing uh, when Garrison shot and then it switched over to where Lees tried to get a, a takedown. He probably should have just created space and got back up, kept it on a speed where he was doing the most damage. Unfortunately for Fort Hood, that is their first loss of the night. They had five victories uh, in the third place fights in the first portion of the tournament. Uh, but this is their first loss and it unfortunately comes in a championship fight. But Shane Lees, uh, second place is better than no place. and. Congratulations to him, but again, congratulations to Glenn Garrison for taking home his first ever championship trophy. Absolutely. That microphone just not wanting to work. <laughs> Congratulations to Glenn Garrison. Thank you.
very uh, hard fought fight indeed. And we're going to be moving on now to the welterweight fight. And we have another competitor from Fort Hood in the welterweight division, going to be competing here for a championship. Second Lieutenant Nick Schaefer is going to be taking on Matt, First Lieutenant Matthew Kyler from Fort Carson. So it's another matchup of Fort Carson oh, versus Fort Hood. And uh, we just saw Glenn Garrison from Fort Hood get, it, uh, get the best of Shane Lee's from Fort Hood. Uh, now, uh, first Wait, Lieutenant Matthew Kyler going to be making his way to the ring. Yeah, uh, Lieutenant Nick Schaefer, this is his first time in competition. Uh, he is a jiu-jitsu uh, uh, mixed martial arts background. Um, he is from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, level two certified in combatives, but uh, first lieutenant Matt Kyler is a again is a uh, returning champion. Last year he won the uh, I think uh, 185 class, oh, excuse me, 170 weight class, 2011. Um, once again, uh, very experienced wrestler. Uh, I do believe he wrestled at West Point, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Purple belt in judo and an all-American wrestler, like I said, uh, coming out of uh, Clearfield, Pennsylvania. So very excited to see uh, Second Lieutenant uh, Matthew Kyler competing again. Uh, last year he competed for the MCOE um, out of Fort Benning. This year he moved over to Fort Carson doing uh, his uh, move and duty station. So he is the defending champion and uh, at 170. At, yes, correct at 170, and now he's trying his weight uh, or his luck at the. Uh, the welterweight division, and here comes he second lieutenant Nick Schaefer. He stands at five feet, eight inches tall, weighs at 155 pounds. Out of Fort Hood, Texas, second lieutenant Nick Schaefer. And this is the first time uh, that Schaefer has found himself in the championship. So, wouldn't you know it? He's in the championship fight. One of his coaches being uh, Staff Sergeant Colton Smith. You know, he's, uh, he's well versed in uh, all aspects of the battle. A fellow commentator. And uh, Fort Carson really has a chance to move up here in the standings. You just saw Glenn Garrison win. Uh, Fort Carson coming in and fifth place at the beginning of the day with 300 points. Glenn Garrison wins his title fight. Matthew Kyler has an opportunity here. And after Kyler coming up next in the middleweight fight, John Anderson from Fort Collins is also going to be fighting. So Fort Carson with an opportunity here to kind of jump up in the standings if they can come away with three first place titles. Absolutely. All, all the teams this year brought, uh, you know, all the top teams uh, placing right now brought, you know, just a overwhelming wealth of experience. And it shows their hard work coming out here getting ready for the tournament. Um, Carson's team relatively uh, stacked with wrestlers, um, bringing uh, Cap, uh, Cap Anderson, a uh, reigning champion, a uh, returning champion uh, from 2011, I believe, no, 2010, back at Fort Benning. Um, he didn't compete last year, I don't believe. And uh, now uh, uh, first lieutenant Matthew Kyler. So uh, very excited to see this match. And here we go, we are underway here in the welterweight championship fight and it's off to a ferocious start. As Nick Schaefer from Fort Hood in the red corner, Matthew Kyler in the blue corner. Yep, just swarming him again, a, a wrestler by trade, uh, Lieutenant Mount Kyler is. Uh, I saw him compete in uh, 2010, I believe, excuse me, 2011. Um, and uh, very excited to see him out here competing again. Uh, dominating the fight so far, thus far, came out with a couple big punches, as well as uh, Lieutenant Schaefer uh, throwing a couple big punches, but now he has uh, Lieutenant Kyler on his back. Second consecutive matchup where we see Fort Carson against Fort Hood. We just saw Glenn Garrison from Fort Carson defeat Shane Lees, and now we are in the welterweight title fight, and let's see if Nick Schaefer can get uh, some revenge for Fort Hood. Kyler's got like a modified uh, rear mount in, throwing some good punches to the back. I mean, uh, to the side of the head from the back. Um, not trying to get full mount because he doesn't want to get rolled and uh, end up on his back. So it just, you know, good good pressure, uh, maintaining positive control of his opponent's back. 
uh, trying to land some effective strikes uh, from here and not give up too much positioning. Well, very interesting to see Tyler on his back. Um, I'm not seeing this before uh, in this tournament here today, but again, he's a very good wrestler. He got his hooks in. Uh, in, some, in a modified butterfly guard, got positive control of his arms now, uh, getting his opponent's head up, getting the double on hooks, trying to sweep him over. But uh, Lieutenant Schaefer doing a good job maintaining pressure and getting, uh, oh, now they're both back on their feet. Schaefer trying for that uh, choke, but now he's... Uh, Gave up his back again. Yep. Uh, again, the pedigree of wrestling from Kyler, uh, All-American. Uh, really showed in the tournament he competed in the other year. Landed uh, some good effective strikes, you know, making uh, Lieutenant Schaefer turn his head and not give up too much positioning. Getting that one hook in. Schaefer now with a hold of uh, Kyler's arm, trying to uh, maneuver his way out of a compromising position here, but uh, he's going to try to go to work here on that arm. Basically trying to get out of this modified rear mount. Now Kyler, you know, maneuvering into a almost a mounted position, but with uh, Kyler scooting out almost. But Kyler again maintaining that uh, that uh, that modified rear mount. Now getting a hand around the neck. Good constant pressure. Not giving up space. Uh, moving tight into a half guard position now. Lieutenant Schaefer is. The fact that uh, they're tired of getting punched in the back uh, from the back. You know, maybe he can work a submission from here. If you're putting on your back, you're not really going to get much. Schaefer trying to find his footing here, but uh, Kyler Landed not some. having any of it. Yeah, had some effective strikes here to the body, both to the full guard. Controlling uh, the posture of uh, Lieutenant Kyler. Uh, he's uh, sitting up so that way he can uh, press down in his opponent's face and land some effective strikes, some body work there. Oh, uh, there goes Schaefer trying to work for uh, an arm bar or a triangle of sorts. Back to the full guard. Kyler trying to land a couple punches in there, but uh, Schaefer now trying to wrap up his arms and a couple of lefts to the body here from Kyler. Yeah. Kyler should be moving. Yeah, there you go. He's slowly moving him to the cage. That way he can't create space and get up. Doing a good job there. Again, kind of like the last match uh, with uh, Garrison and uh, Lees. Kind of same style. Wrestler versus, uh, you know, uh, MMA, um, that being said, uh, Schaefer showing good stand-up in the beginning. But now uh, Kyler just reverting back to his wrestling, landing some good effective strikes on the ground. The ground and pound, as they say. Both fighters trying to figure things out here against each other. Uh, Schaefer has spent a lot, lot of this first round on his back. But uh, Kyler really with the dominant position thus far. Yeah, I think that was 10 second mark. Kyler needs to land, keep working. If not, the ref's going to stand him up soon. And there you have it. There's the end of the first round from the welterweight championship fight between Matthew Kyler and Nick Schaefer. Not, uh, not a ton of action, but uh, Matthew Kyler seeming to have the upper hand as he's gained position on Schaefer throughout most of that first round. Both of these guys' conditioning is, uh, is not even a question. Um, Knowing uh, one of uh, Sorn, uh, excuse me, Lieutenant Schaefer's coaches, uh, Sorn Smith, there talking to him about you know what you need to do. Basically, he needs to keep a standing. I think uh, I don't think he wants to get in the ground with uh, Lieutenant Kyler, with the fact that he's such a phenomenal wrestler. Both of these guys conditioning, neither of them breathing hard. So, and uh, we we've got another interview lined up now, uh, Sergeant. Woodbridge Bullet standing by now with an interview with Glenn Garrison, who's a first time winner here in Fort Hood.
We'll get to that interview in uh, just a moment. We are now in the second round here of this fight. Another good shot by Lieutenant Kyler. Uh, didn't want to feel the effects of any of that uh, stand-up portion of the competition. Uh, now he has, uh, oh, looks like Ken uh, Schaefer. And Schaefer got him into a modified arm bar, but Kyler fights out of it. Okay. Ooh, that was close. Well done there by Kyler to fight out of it. I thought uh, Schaefer was going to have himself a victory, but Kyler does a good job of fighting out of it. Yeah, very good job. That was a quick and unsuspecting arm bar attempt by uh, Lieutenant Schaefer. Schaefer. Once again on his back. Spent much of the first round on his back, but Schaefer going for that arm bar. Wasn't able to lock it in, and now Kyler trying to hammer away here with a right hand. Yep, just, uh, you know, getting some good strikes in, leg strikes. Feel the effect later on in the rounds. Uh, you know, not going to finish the fight, but it's going to make your opponent more uncomfortable. Try to get him to move a little bit. That way you can improve your position. Boy, and uh, Schaefer taking some shots there in the left leg. Uh, that is going to be pretty black and blue, I would imagine, tomorrow morning. Yep, uh, Schaefer got uh, Kyler in a uh, half guard position. Kyler really wants to fight for that underhook uh, due to the fact that that's the way, you know, Kyler, I mean, Schaefer has the best chance of getting out. If he scoots his hips out with that underhook there, he could probably, you know, have a better chance of standing up. But Kyler's pressure making it uh, not impossible, but very difficult at this point. Schaefer doing a good job, not taking a lot of damage here. Walk around. Walk around. Walking past the legs, uh, achieving good side control position, his head up against the cage. Um, like I said, excellent caliber wrestler. Yeah, you, I was just about to say, you could see Kyler's wrestling skills coming coming to true to form here in this second round, being able to get out of a couple of uh, Submission attempts here by uh, Nick Schaefer. See, uh, Schaefer, uh, Lieutenant Schaefer's arm, if he had it trapped under his leg the way he did, that was an even worse position because if Kyler walked that arm past uh, his body, uh, his head would be fully exposed. And so, see Kyler, you know, staying in this position as long as he can and uh, just, you know, laying some very good effective strikes. Second round. Time uh, to the mount position here. Yeah. Second Tempting. round looking a lot like the first round thus far. Schaefer on his back. Kyler trying to gain control. Schaefer just trying to fight him off. This is uh, pretty much a play out of uh, last year's tournament for uh, Kyler. He did the exact same thing. Kyler waiting for a pristine opportunity to, to strike here, but... Uh, Schaefer on the defensive, doing a good job of uh, keeping Kyler at arm's length. Yep, Kyler, you know, controlling the legs, getting past uh, modified half guard of Schaefer, uh, landing a couple of effective strikes there. Schaefer really needs to start scrambling, putting his uh, his feet on his opponent's hips, or getting that unhook and trying to get up, uh, using the cage to walk his opponent around, getting his head off the, the cage. Once again, we're in the second round of this welterweight championship fight between First Lieutenant Matthew Kyler from Fort Carson and Second Lieutenant Nick Schaefer from Fort Hood at the U.S. Army Combative Championships. We hope you've enjoyed the show thus far. It's been a very entertaining view here ringside. And we are in the championship portion of the show. And Kyler now, again, hammering away with that right hand, trying to do some damage. But uh, Schaefer just hanging in there. Yeah, he's, he's just kind of scrunched up, trying to not take too much damage to his uh, to his face. But now he's trying to jump a, 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 knee, a knee bar, it looks like. Uh, Kyler's pressure is going to make it hard to do so. He's trying to reach up and get it. He's fighting. This is exactly what he needs to do. He needs to scramble and then make Kyler, you know, move. That way he's not, for one, getting punched in the face, but two, making Kyler, you know, kind of on the defensive. So uh, this is what he needs. Schaefer having his flexibility tested here a little bit. Uh, holding up like a pretzel, but uh, he seems to be doing all right but uh, he still has not been able to gain the upper As hand. As you can see, those punches are kind of affecting uh, Schaefer a little bit, changes his position after a couple good body blows by Kyler. 10 seconds left now here in round number two of this welterweight title fight. And uh, 
Kyler trying to get some last second shots in there and that's the end of the second round. Two rounds in to the uh, welterweight championship fight. And again, these guys just kind of, you know, it seems like a, a back and forth affair. Nobody really wants to concede any kind of ground. Kyler might have a slight advantage to this point, but uh, this fight is definitely up for grabs here in the third round, isn't it, Sergeant? Well, I think uh, Kyler's winning the match overall for the fact that he's in the more dominant position. He's landing the uh, all the strikes, uh, per se. But uh, it's going to be very tough for uh, Lieutenant Schaefer to, uh, you know, establish himself in this fight unless he gets a knockout or, a, or a, you know, a submission attempt or, excuse me, a submission victory. Yeah. Um, that being said, you know, I've seen Kyler, uh, Lieutenant Kyler fight before. I know his game plan is going to be to get this takedown again and, and um, to finish the fight on the ground the way he has been, grinding it out. So, Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, Schaefer probably does not want this uh, fight to go to a decision. It probably would not go in his favor at this point. So uh, look for Schaefer here to try to lock in his submission or perhaps go for the knockout blow. But uh, I think it's going to be awfully difficult because we've seen Matthew Kyler uh, put on just an absolute uh, yep. te test of will here in, the, in this fight. Yep, textbook uh, Lieutenant Kyler, takedown and some ground and pound. Uh, you know, he stays busy, so it's very hard for the ref to, you know, see it as, as, as stalling. He's not really riding it out. He is throwing very effective strikes on the ground. Uh, he is trying to improve his position little by little, not trying to give up position either. Again, uh, this is textbook uh, Matthew Kyler, so. He just needs to watch out, because I'm sure, you know, um, Tennis Schaefer has something in his bag of tricks. Hope that he's going to try to attempt. He needs to attempt at this point, because if not, it's going to be uh, another victory uh, for Fort Carson over Fort Hood. Kyler once again with the uh, superior positioning on Nick Schaefer. And uh, we really haven't seen much from Nick Schaefer in this fight in terms of uh, going on the offensive. but Plus, uh, Lieutenant uh, Kyler cut down from 170 that he won last year to 155 to compete. So, you know, he, naturally I believe he's going to be uh, the, 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 the stronger uh, fighter in this match. Not taking anything away from uh, Lieutenant Schaefer, but, uh, you know, that's a, that's a very big cut for a guy who walks around, sure. you know. Absolutely. At probably about 185, 190. No doubt about it, and uh, he is in control of this fight right now, looking for his second consecutive championship, and uh, as, you, as Sergeant Sales just mentioned, uh, in a new weight class this year. Yep. So, uh, again, Matthew Kyler looking very impressive here in this championship See, if he, fight. Uh, right now, yep, this is a very bad position for uh, Lieutenant Schaefer because uh, he has his leg, I mean, excuse me, Lieutenant Kyler's leg underhooked. You know, his face is completely exposed. Um, and Kyler's almost a modified north-south position, which means uh, he's not going to get anything. You know, he's not going to have any submission attempts, uh, Lieutenant Schaefer is. What does the referee he, need to see here in order to, to, to force them to stand up? It doesn't seem like... Uh, basically, uh, a stalling of the more dominant opponent. Like, uh, if Kyler wasn't doing anything, wasn't trying to improve his position, wasn't throwing any uh, effective strikes, then uh, naturally I would uh, uh, expect the referee to stand him up. But... Lieutenant Kyler has been working the entire fight. He's been throwing very good strikes, uh, very methodical in his uh, attempts for uh, a more dominant body position. Um, so, you know, he's working. You can't uh, give up, a, uh, you can't uh, award the, the person on the bottom a better position due to the fact that he's, uh, you know, taking the brunt of the, uh, the, the, the fight there. Kyler once again with the uh, better positioning and firing away with the right hand, Schaefer. Uh, really having a hard time trying to establish any kind of positive momentum and uh, Kyler all over him, not giving him an inch to breathe. Yeah, again, like I said, Fort Carson brought, uh, you know, just a, a stacked team of wrestlers. Uh, that being said, sorry, Garrison earlier in the uh, <clears throat> the lightweight competition and now in the welterweight competition, Lieutenant uh, Kyler, both phenomenal wrestling caliber uh, athletes. And it shows, you know, their style are, uh, are is a wrestling background. They stick to what they know. They're very, very good at it. And uh, and it shows, you know, he's, he's more likely going to win this fight if uh, something dramatic doesn't happen by uh, Lieutenant Schaefer. Schaefer has spent the majority of this fight on his back, and uh, he hasn't been able to uh, really take advantage of any kind of positioning that he's had. And there's Kyler trying to hammer away now. 
Yep, see Kyler's constant pressure up against the cage, not giving uh, Lieutenant Schaefer any room or space to maneuver. Uh, he just needs to be smart, keeps his arm, keeps his, uh, keeping his arms in, uh, not giving up an arm bar, which, you know, could very well happen by Lieutenant Schaefer. But um, that cage, you know, being pressed against a cage like that makes it very, very hard. See, there we go, another submission attempt. You got a high guard at this point. Taking some of the pressure off Lieutenant Schaefer by, you know, maneuvering his uh, legs up over uh, Lieutenant Kyler's shoulders. Time is ticking away here for second Lieutenant Nick Schaefer. He's been on his back for the majority of this fight, and unless something dramatic happens here in the next uh, 90 seconds or so, this uh, fight looks like it's going to go to Matthew Kyler. Yeah, I don't put it past Lieutenant Schaefer, though. You know, the quality of uh, athlete he is and making it this far in the competition, you know, you can very well expect something like that happening. But the problem is he needs to make it happen. It's not going to happen on its own. Two pretty evenly matched fighters, yep. and here we go. Ten seconds left in the third round, and uh, it looks like Matthew Kyler is going to be on his way to a second straight championship here at Fort Hood. There's the bell, and this one is going to go to the card, and uh, it looks like Fort Carson over Fort Hood again. It looks like for the yeah, for the second straight fight, Fort Carson is going to get a victory over Fort Hood. And uh, we promised you that interview with uh, Glenn Garrison a moment ago. And now we're going to go to Sergeant Woodbridge Bullock, who's standing by with Staff Sergeant Glenn Garrison. I am with Staff Sergeant Glenn Garrison, the lightweight champion out of Fort Carson. Now, Sergeant, you are the first combatant to beat a Fort Hood soldier tonight. What does that mean to you and to Fort Carson? Uh, that's a real big deal for me and Fort Carson. Uh, we've been trying to take this uh, championship away from you guys for years now, and uh, being part of the world-class athlete program down there at Fort Carson, uh, I trained Greco-Roman wrestling and tried to make the Olympic team. I came short this year and uh, ended up fourth, but uh, it was a na kind of a natural transition into the, the combatives world, and uh, been trying to work the, all the stuff I don't know, the striking, the jujitsu, and uh, you know we really want to bring this home for. Uh, Fort Carson. Okay, so with such success being on the top, uh, where do you go from here? How do you push yourself? Um, obviously, I got to work uh, my my issues, my uh, striking, my more jujitsu, and uh, I try to round out our team a little bit better so that uh, we can take home the trophy. Now, how are you going to use this uh, victory as a leadership opportunity to enhance Fort Carson, and 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 how is that going to enhance it? Uh, of course, bring, bringing uh, my individual trophy back to Fort Carson is a, a big deal for me and my unit. But uh, also, uh, hopefully we can make our, our combatives program a lot better with uh, me and some of the other guys who can uh, help out in our areas of expertise. All right. There we have the words of a true winner. Uh, back to you, Pierre.